time to talk about slow motion. Let's begin by loading a movie that was taken on an iPhone. We begin by going to load files. And then we select our movie. And then we select replace current project. And that loads the movie. Now we go to our resources window and we click on media and we right click and go to match all and that conforms all of your sample rates, frame rates, track sizes, project sizes to the movie size. So if you go to our format we can see that the iPhone recorded it at 240 frames per second. And this was a crappy iPhone, so it only did 720p. First of all, we don't want the audio, so we're going to right click on the audio track and we're going to say delete track. So now we just have the video. Now, if I left click on the time bar, we can seek around the movie. And if I click on the play icon, it'll do its best. But because the project is configured for 240 frames per second, it's not going to be able to match that frame rate, especially not when it's capturing the screen at the same time. But it's basically playing back at real time, dropping frames as necessary. What we want to do is play it much slower than real time. So the easiest way to do that is to go back to your resources window, right click, click on info, and in the info dialog we can edit audio sample rate and we can edit the video frame rate. So instead of 240 I'm going to make that 30. So now the uh, next thing we have to do is to change the project sample project frame rate. Go to settings format. We change the frame rate to match the new frame rate of the asset. Now the problem is, now that we've reduced the asset to 30 frames per second, it's going to stop before the asset is actually over. So we have to extend the length of the timeline. We do that going to the uh, time zoom, which is this right here, and we click the up arrow to free up some more space on the timeline. And then we go to the end, go to the end of the clip until our cursor changes into a right arrow. Left click and then drag to the right. Drag to the right as far as you can and then it'll extend the uh, clip until the end of the new asset at 30 frames per second. Let me go back here to where it says fit. Click on fit to zoom in. So now the asset is stretched. When I hit play, it's going to play much slower than the full frame rate, giving you slow motion. This is fine for changing one clip, but what if you want to load a whole bunch of clips? Let's just load the whole directory. So I'm going to left click in the load dialog. I'm going to hold down shift and then left click on the last file, which is going to select all of them. And I'm going to go down here. I'm going to select replace current project and concatenate 
all the all the tracks. So that'll create that'll stack all the files end to end. And once again, we don't want the audio, so we're just going to delete it. But now, if I go to the media, they're all set to 240 frames per second because that's what the phone recorded. And it would be really painful to go through every single one of these, change them all to 30, and then go to settings format, change the project to 30, and then stretch out every single clip. So instead what we're going to do, we're going to do something special. Well, we're just going to go back here. We're going to go right click, match all again. So the project is configured for the 240 frames per second. And any of the, all these clips are going to play at their normal speed. Which is going to be really jerky. Because it can't do 240 frames per second. And we're just going to leave it like this. We're going to right click on the track here. And we're going to say attach effect. And the effect I'm going to use is reframe RT. So now that we've done that, we go into this magnifying glass. We're going to view the controls. Well, I'm going to say 30 input frames are going to become 240 output frames. And then I'm going to select stretch. So what that's going to do is that's going to it's going to make each frame take 8 times as much time to display. I'm going to close that dialog. So when I play this back, we'll just pick a spot where there's some motion. It plays back in slow motion. And just as if I went through every single every single asset and change the asset to 30 frames per second, and I change the project to 30 frames per second. But the problem is, the uh, playback is now going to end about one-eighth the full duration of the actual uh, sequence. So you have to go, we have to zoom out again. We go back here, and we, we zoom out the timeline to expose more empty space. And then we go into the very last, very last clip, get the right arrow, left click, we go to the, the end of the reframe RT, we re left click on the end of reframe RT, drag it out, and then we click around, try to find where the uh, playback is going to end. Playback actually ends out here, even though the last clip ends here. Because reframe RT is stretching out what's actually playing back. So reframe RT is actually going to play eight times longer than the end of the last clip. Click and hold on the time bar and drag around until you find the last frame. And then you can zoom in. And roughly at that last frame, you can uh, zoom out again. I'm going to use the keyboard here and just hit the up arrow to zoom out. And then I'm going to do shift left click to expand the selection. And then I'm going to hit backspace to cut off the excess reframe RT. So this is basically everything that we loaded but being stretched out eight times by the reframe RT effect. So now when we're way out here it's going to play back eight times slower from where the clips are. Now, the, the problem with reframe RT is that if I go into settings format, the project has to stay at 240 frames per second. If I change it to 30 frames per second, watch what happens. Now the playback is jerky. So what Reframe RT is doing is it's not actually interpolating frame numbers 
in the original assets, it's interpolating frame numbers in the project. So when you reduce the project frame rate to 30, then it's going to divide 30 by 8, and it's going to play back that number of frames. So it's going to play back about 4 frames per second instead of 30 frames per second. So this has to be what it was originally. I'll just go to undo, edit, undo set format, and that'll restore it to 240. So now when I play it back, it's going to interpolate from the original 240 frames per second. So now all these, all these clips have been converted to slow motion all at once. But this can be kind of a pain to edit. Dealing with this reframe RT effect and all this empty space here. Of course, you could edit like this. You could just add a whole bunch of other tracks if you want to incorporate this into a, a longer movie. And you just leave the reframe RT the way it is. But sometimes it's more convenient to take this whole timeline and convert it into a clip. So what we're going to do is we're going to go save as. We're going to save this whole timeline as slow one. And then we're going to create a new timeline. And uh, for this new timeline, it's going to be 30 frames per second. So I'm going to go to settings format, change this to 30. And another reason for doing this is so you don't have to edit at 240 frames per second. You can uh, incorporate the slow motion into another project at 30 frames per second. So we have this new project at 30 frames per second. We go to File, Load Files, and look at that slow motion EDL that I saved. And then we're going to go down here, and we're going to say Nest Sequence. It's going to load it as a nested sequence. So just like that, because slow1.xml also has audio output, even though we deleted the audio track, it's going to generate audio. It tried to paste the two audio channels as different tracks here, but we're not interested in audio, so I'm just going to delete those. And then when I go here, fit the whole thing, the whole reframe RT, the whole 240 frames per second, it's all pasted into this, into this new project at 30 frames per second, just like an ordinary asset. And it plays back in slow motion. All of those original assets are just going to play back in slow motion, as if I manually right-clicked and converted all of them to 30 frames per second. This is sort of uh, a highly finessed way of doing it. You could have also, you could render slow1.xml into a temporary movie file and loaded that movie file in. But if you're going to make a long form movie with one passage in slow motion, this is probably the easiest way to do it. And when I right click on slow1.xml and resources, hit info, what you'll find is you can't change the frame rate here like you could when it was a movie file. But it will interpret, it'll interpolate it here. So this project doesn't have to be 240 frames per second. And that is pretty much how you do slow motion.